the so, elastic ip just to understand this in your dev environment you allow teams to do host their instances in public subnet public subnet yes yes but so we are not allowed that have your instances will be in private subnet yeah but uh, right now our db everything is on premises only web server and uh, application server we are using zbus that is on our cloud so db is still is in our on premises we have not moved the db to is, cloud is because that's not uh, a problem that your on prem your your uh, your dev qa is different from your prod environment then right because they are yes 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 even also prod also we have a, all the environment we have a db is in, in uh, on premises right now we have planned to move to oci oracle cloud no, don't so, confuse me don't confuse me give me some simple uh, understanding you said just to simplify the things you make sure your developers uh, machines are in public subnet so you can save cost on the nat gateways yes 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 but yes. in your production environment where are those servers they are in public uh, yeah. or private subnet uh, no yes yes in production we have it uh, uh, web server and application server in public subnet sorry web server is public subnet and uh, our jbos application server in uh, backend server is in uh, private subnet but db server is in our on premises we have not moved our db server ah, to forget about db server that's a separate question uh, but now your dev environment is different from your prod environment isn't it definitely yes 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 does it not create problems uh, and mom is definitely there will be instance and all will be pod as well as everything will be different size be you can reduce your instance size if you want to your dev is not used that much you can save on that but should you save on a nat gateway and make your dev qa different from your prod environment because then the developer is building and testing in a public subnet but deploying in private subnet yeah from the deployment uh, dev and qa we are not doing this thing private subnet are not touching when it will be going for that uat testing or mops testing or staging that time we, we are using for the uh, uh, private subnet but until qa we are in uh, okay. are in if we, what i feel uh, is that this is not a very good example to quote when you are again cost optimization uh, claim because you are actually bringing more issues in the environment and just to save a nat gateway cost for an organization uh, yes for individual my account if i have to create i'll probably do that but if i have to do a poc i will do that but a company uh, because they will be make investing a lot to test it multiple times multiple environments just to make sure that their private subnets are tested so i i i don't see making your dev qa very different from prod and bringing bringing in additional complexity to your environment i got that you you understand right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. public subnet has a lot of uh, freedom developers will build that and there is a very good chance once you put it in production or your testing staging environments in private subnets things will not work can you give an example when when your developers create something and it doesn't work in higher environments uh are you aware what would happen if something is developed in dev environment developed in a public subnet but placed in private subnet later on uh, uh no i have not encountered this type of issue till now yeah especially in your situation where you are uh, being audited you are being uh, you have to be compliant you can't save on uh, such minor uh, cost uh, there are a lot of exactly yeah yeah because one of the pci compliance uh, related uh, ask could be that all your data should be uh, privately secured over the aws network and not over the internet exactly yeah so that your developers will be developing everything which goes over the internet because they are using public subnets so that sort of issues you will get no i noted this one yeah yeah it's it's, a, it's not a very good example to on cost optimization and it it Uh, it's not a good example on security side also especially in a compliant environment so think of something else build a good if you are claiming something in interview back it with a strong evidence whether you build robust pipelines or cost optimization because you did mention 
cost optimization, uh, but you are not able to back it with that. Then Kubernetes also you mentioned, you have in your resume few times, but you are saying that the control plane was managed by AWS and you are, your role was limited. So whatever you are claiming in your resume, make sure you can back it with okay. strong answers. So your answers are good. I like the profile. I, I probably would go further into this, but you are not backing it with the strong evidence and the strong uh, sort of experience because th these are the questions you are already working on these things. You are living these things day to day, right? So then your answer should be very crisp and short and not uh, very targeted. Like, yes, this is what I did. These are the three things I did. First, I did this activity. First, I secured my pipelines. Then I optimized my pipeline and that sort of thing. So it should be very crisp answers. Specifically, I'm asking from your, from your resume. I'm not even going outside of it. Right? Okay. All right. Now, uh, a little bit about the on-premise database uh, that uh, you were talking about. Yeah. How do you prove to your, uh, you know, how, how your application accesses that on-prem database, first of all? Uh, see, on-premise database, on database, we don't have access. So we access through our application server and mm -hmm. we have a AWS direct connect we are using. Sometimes you are using in VPN. So if we have given that two option. We have got the token. Mm -hmm. Through the token, we access uh, uh, through our application server. And we have only read read access. We will not execute any query into our production okay. application server, sorry, DB server. So we will secure in this way through either VPN or uh, AWS. Do you know what is the difference between VPN and direct connect? Uh, when you use for that uh, VPN, so externally user roles, mostly having that VPN access, they can access this uh, either application or DB or whatever the resource they want to access. But a uh, direct connect uh, with respect only specific to this AWS service. Hang on. Direct connect is for? Only specific to this AWS service. Okay. Again, slightly vague answer. Just I'll check that. Yeah. You're not confident, right? Yeah. So, because whenever you are diverting your question to a technology, make sure you understand it. Uh, so, both these options are uh, sort of accessing your on prem or on prem to cloud and cloud to on prem. Uh, bi-directional tunnel is created, uh, but the amount of bandwidth you have in direct connect is much higher. Uh, and VPN is more of a, a short-term solution in such scenarios. Yeah, Cost-wise also, my I think this uh, direct connect might be price to this. Sorry, cost-wise direct connect? Uh, cost-wise direct connect will be more as compared to VPN. Set up a direct connect, it takes longer and it costs higher but the amount bandwidth is uh, higher like you get a uh, good response time uh, vpn usually is to get started that uh, you want to start and don't want to wait until the direct connect is established you can uh, start connecting give me some example of uh, any uh, good script that you have created any automation script yeah, uh, as I told, uh, we are processing nearly 24 countries uh, input files into our system. Mm -hmm. So I was involved more on uh, automation due to how we will get this file. Uh, the, what are the input file from this cell and sales vendor? Mm -hmm. And uh, I make as a cell script through the cell script, I um, automated that process and uh, to connect to their system and process into our, uh, our application. Okay. So this is one of my automation through the processing nearly 65 setup we have done for uh, production. Same okay. thing we did for this QA and uh, lower environment. And second optimization is, uh, sorry, uh, automation is that uh, uh, I, I, I want to know any EC2 instance is a running status or stop status or uh, we will be just going checking only stop status 
if any instance is not running more than we will give this condition 30 days or 60 days will be generate some report particular who has having assigned that uh, uh, team this particular instance then we will be send mail to the particular team that this instance is not running more than 60 days or um, 90 days whether you want to terminate or you want to reuse Where do you put this script uh, in your environment uh, mostly we will be use our uh, uh, githubs okay this is a get us only particular to our upper uh, this access only to our devops team when it is not access to this uh, where will this script execute yeah we will be put into the script into our uh, uh, cloud watch okay a uh, cloud function sorry uh, lambda function mm -hmm. so in, through this lambda function uh, mostly i use that uh, boto 3 modules uh, oh. to write right. no no the, just uh, you are asking that uh, uh, to build that any EC2 instance is a stop status, this one or our uh, daily input files? Which, which one you are asking? I was asking about the same script that detects an instance is stopped from 30 days and notifies. Is that a shell script? Uh, that, that, uh, yeah. But that we are running with Python only. We are Python using this Boto 3 module, Python. Yeah. yeah. Python and Lambda function. Lambda function. Yeah, yes. exactly. so emphasize on this because the critical thing in this is lambda because if you are saying we run a shell script then there are questions where you store where you run that where do you store that why are you using a dedicated computer for that or a compute this is a very good example of to implement a lambda with python so even if people are watching like this is a very good example of learning python with lambda you don't have to learn the entire python and how much python do you know uh, yes, uh, uh, as I from the last ten year, I'm working on the Linux. Mm -hmm. So I have both uh, Perl as well as uh, self scripting and Python. I am good on that. Yeah. Learn it through such examples that detect the instance uh, state in your environment and take some actions based on that. Use Boto three. So uh, Ranjit, I think I'm pretty much done. Like I sort of enjoyed the discussion. It's uh, you have good hands on experience. Uh, the only thing that I can probably suggest, uh, you may be going, you can ask any specific questions if you have, but I felt that uh, you uh, not going next level, like that I thought that we would probably get into an architect kind of discussion, uh, a senior uh, consultant kind of discussion. That experience is not reflecting, I'm afraid. So you, you have good experience, you would probably be competing with a lot of DevOps and cloud engineers out there. But uh, I would like to see like with a 14 years of IT experience, you would be speaking a lot more technical words and uh, architectural words in your vocabulary. Those things are missing. So you emphasize that uh, related to this uh, cost optimization and security, that is main priority thing. So what I need to be more focused on that, uh, uh, so cost optimization, need some real examples, even if you have not implemented all of them, understand how you can save cost for your customer, uh, whether it's Kubernetes cluster or what are the, those different opportunities that are possible. Not basic tweaking that you reduce from uh, Lambda, which was to run five seconds, running five minutes. That's more of a misconfiguration, but you need to find out uh, how you optimize the uh, Docker image size how you optimize the number of containers that have to run and based on the right sizing of the container image you actually reach to a right sizing of the ec2 instance worker node and in that process you optimize the number of worker nodes and cost something like for security side security i think uh, you have already implemented some, you didn't talk about secret management in your pipeline, where your passwords are stored, how you fetch those uh, secrets in your pipeline, all, all sort of such examples. If if you get a full toss, like give me three examples of this, give me five examples of this, or, or give me some best practices that you did. That's your full toss kind of thing. Like you just have to play that uh, uh, very bravely and your language should be ready that this, these are the things that I did in my environment. Now, even if you have not done it, make sure you understand that it's possible and you claim that uh, that, that sort of thing. You, you are aware that these are other opportunities that can be done. Okay. But overall, 
the language that you are speaking sounds like that of a DevOps engineer, cloud engineer, not as a senior person or a senior consultant or a senior expert architect, those higher roles. So I don't want you to compete with those junior DevOps engineers and cloud engineers at this level. So uh, build a good vocabulary, those words like uh, scalability, multi-region, uh, disaster recovery, uh, what you see in the job descriptions, make sure you are speaking those words, right? Okay. These words should come up, RPO, RTO, how many customers we engage with, how those, those uh, multi-customer, multi-region, multi-environments, uh, the pipelines are smart enough that they can deploy to you have like UAT staging and I don't know how many environments. So what you do in those different environments, uh, branching and merging strategies, um, whatever you discuss with your architects, just bring that experience in your interview that that's your experience. So uh, the language and the words have to be focused more. Okay. You have done good hands-on, but back it with a real good technical words that would I would suggest will go far. Thank you. Yeah, sure. So what's the plan? After this, you gonna work on it. We can get into another more. Yes, it definitely. Yeah, yeah. We can yeah. get into another we'll discussion. Be... Correct, correct. If, you, if you actually get a real interview lined up in future or mm -hmm. um, you just want to practice, you can you can just bring that job description. That Sanjeev, this is uh, a real job that I have to go for. What questions can be there or what sort of words I can speak which will increase your chances of getting success? So we can discuss on that later. Okay, so how will we contact you through the same? Number. Okay, okay, same number. Okay. Yeah, you have my phone number. We can uh, connect. Connect. Okay. Yeah. Focus on the Google it or this ask, at GPT. What are those technical words? Or ask any look at a job description that you want to target, put it in chat GPT and ask what are the architectural keywords in this resume. Uh, give me the keywords in this res in this job description and key words like main focus words and just go through them. Most of the time you will see uh, audit, um, security, compliance. Uh, you will see uh, disaster recovery, scalability and uh, blue green or something like that so focus on those words you have to speak those words later on okay whether you record some video of yourself whether you uh, speak at a place or you whatever is the opportunity you just try to uh, speak those words whenever you get chance and try to relate those keywords with your experience that okay i did multi-region uh, deployments then first you speak to yourself, you convince yourself that you know all these words, you know disaster recovery, you know security, you know scalability. Then automatically in the interviews, things will start to, uh, you know, you will automatically start speaking those words. First you have to practice, then you start speaking those words. Sure, sure. Yeah, Just explain it to yourself, explain it to the mirror, explain it to a video, explain it to a person, explain it to your community, some juniors, and it will make so much impact on your uh, interviews and your speaking ability. Yeah, That fluency will come like very fluently. You will talk that uh, those keywords will flow from all, all directions that, you know, that, that will showcase that you are an expert. Yeah. But you have to practice it. Exactly. All right. Uh, I will wish you best of luck and then we'll uh, connect sometime. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Bye.